Good morning. Welcome to the 2018 State of the University Address. I'm Gail Hackett, and I have the privilege of serving as Provost and Vice President for Academic Affairs here at Virginia Commonwealth University. I'm very pleased to welcome the many members of the community who are here today at the James Branch Cobble Library, as well as the many others who are joining us via live streaming through our website. I'd also like to welcome VCU Board of Visitors members, member Ben, ben Dendy, who is here with us today, as well as other board, board members who are joining us online. The State of the University Address is an annual tradition at VCU that, that bring, provides the opportunity for each of us to reflect on our many successes and to learn about our future goal, goals and aspirations. Before we welcome President Rao to the stage, we'd like to take a few minutes to meet some of the people at VCU and beyond who are ensuring that our public university is a public good. And in the process, are making our community and our world a better place. Becoming more and more of an adult and thinking on my own two feet in a way because I used to be really shy back in high school. Doing all these music related things and being involved in music has unlocked parts of my brain and just has opened me up. You just should not have a preconceived notion about what these kids can accomplish or what they're going to be like or how they're going to react to things. Treat them like you treat any human being. Tyler's experiences at VCU illustrate the impact of college on his ability to grow, which ultimately will lead to his goal of working in music therapy when we really fully embrace diversity and are committed to inclusive environments, really good things happen. You don't find people standing on a corner selling drugs in Carver. By the time we realize that it's happening as residents of the neighborhood, we make a few phone calls and it's gone, it's done. attribute that to the community policing. And community policing for us in Carver, as well as VCU, is a partnership. We get good information back and forth, back and forth, because we're talking to each other. Carver is a great example of the collaboration between a community and our department. It's our way to rely on the community, and, and it's their way to rely on us. A lot of that comes from the research. As we're applying our research and our studies to that community, they're giving us feedback on where we're right, where we're wrong. That's an amazing opportunity as an academic to have that real life, real world application of the research you're doing. And what we're teaching our students is a result of the relationships that we have with VCU PD and the Carver community. If I want to eat something um, that I love to eat, guess what, I don't, I don't have to worry about, okay, will this trigger a pain? Will this trigger an onset? I was the fourth patient to have that surgery. Since surgery, haven't had any pain medication. So this was one of the best decisions that I've made in my life. It's a motivation for us to do more and more for all these patients, to help them better their lives and do better in their career, or whatever they are not able to do when they have this chronic pancreatitis diseases. The driver at VCU to me is the passion of the, of the team members and the, uh, I think the insistence that the patient comes first. All of us on the team are humbled and gratified by her trust and by the ability to help her and, and do what we had hoped to do, which is to restore her life. Good 
Good morning. It is so good to be together with all of you again this year. I want to thank, begin by thanking Provost Hackett for her introduction and for setting the stage, if you will. I also want to take just a moment to say thank you to our colleagues and our neighbors who shared their incredible stories in the video that we just watched. Very inspiring and, of course, remind us that as a public university, the university must always be the public good. And so if you will please stand, those of you who are in the video, I know you've joined us today, so that we have a chance to say thank you to you. So as is the tradition, we are gathered here so that we can reflect in this new year on the state of our university. And I gotta tell you, this is a year with br just brimming with history and of course hope. So first, let me start out logically with our history. This is an institution that began 180 years ago with a great commitment to the social good. And when we came together under the VCU name 50 years ago, our charter asked us, and I'm gonna read it specifically, to confront on an intellectual and practical level the social environment which surrounds us, to relate ourselves to the community, and to participate in the solution of existing problems. This mission remains unchanged. In fact, today, more than ever, we embody a commitment as a positive force for progress. We are the consummate catalyst for our Commonwealth. VCU has the greatest economic impact of any university in Virginia at $6 billion a year. We conduct more than $275 million in sponsored research and creative activity, which is a record, by the way, for the ninth time out of the last 10 years. Our students started 22 new companies in 2016 and contributed 1.3 million hours of volunteer service. And more students than ever graduate from this institution, about 8,000 last year coming to us from countless backgrounds and setting off into limitless futures. Our academic health center, which is the oldest in the Commonwealth of Virginia, treated 250,000 patients last year. So I want you to just think about it like this. The entire population of Madison, Wisconsin, or Buffalo, New York, coming through the doors of our hospitals and our clinics every year. Our patients include, by the way, 50,000 children. We also care for 100,000 people in our emergency department, more than any hospital in the Commonwealth of Virginia. And remember that we cover 200,000 lives across the Commonwealth through our Virginia Premier Health Plan. Across the enterprise, your dedicated efforts have honored the words of our former president, Warren Brandt, who said at the first convocation 50 years ago, he said, VCU will become a name that will mean a great deal in the years to come, and I got to tell you, that time has come. We have grown exponentially. We will never outgrow our mission. It is still as it, as, 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 as it has ever been, simple in phrase, but enormous in prospect, to improve lives, to save lives, and to give life meaning. Yes, that's our history. Now, let me turn to our hope. In just a few months, we'll launch our new strategic plan that we call Quest 2025, Together We Transform. It will build on our current plan, Quest for Distinction, which has been extraordinary, if you think about it, as a guide, where we've been able to seize our place among the nation's premier public research universities, urban public research universities specifically. I am so proud of so many of the great things that we've all accomplished together under Quest. For example, we confer about 50% more degrees than we did when Quest began. 50% more degrees than we began, when we began Quest. That's a staggering number. And we really don't talk about it enough. We all need to be talking about it. Because we're a premier research university, we also award 25% more doctoral degrees than when Quest began. Now we're in the top 50 in terms of numbers of postdocs. Our invention disclosures have jumped by nearly another 50%. Most astounding though to me is this. We graduate more students than ever and the diversity 
of our graduates is unparalleled almost anywhere. Black and Latinx, yes, worth recognizing. Black and Latinx students at VCU, especially women, graduate at higher rates than our university average. So, we have achieved equal graduation rates for students across racial groups. That's huge. That's a really big deal. In fact, 60% of our academic programs now rank in the top 100 nationally for graduating underrepresented students. More than 135 different academic programs in all. So just think about that for a minute. What we've done is we've done all of this while raising admission and academic standards together at the same time, ensuring that VCU is truly a rare place of both access and excellence at the same time. Very few universities can really tell that story of increasing graduation rates, increasing diversity, and academic standards all at the same time. This is an amazing story, but this is VCU's great story. So let's turn our heads to Quest 2025, where we're going to get a chance to build on these great successes. We will realize our local purpose and at the same time we'll achieve the national prominence that this institution deserves. We will remain unapologetically focused on the positive impact that we make. We'll make the most of what makes us stand out, confidently and unequivocally declaring that Virginia Commonwealth University is a public university committed truly to the public good. So you know, public universities like VCU have always had a public purpose. As the American Academy of Arts and Sciences wrote, though, in a 2016 paper, public universities are dedicated to the public. That is the value that animates all of their activities. VCU and our public peers have long catalyzed the nation's technological innovations democratic vitality, and the promise of opportunity for each new generation. Our legacy is America's dream. But let's be realistic. There are, factually speaking, too many people now who simply view public education as a private benefit, a pathway only to personal gain. That belief that public universities serve the public good seems to be disappearing. So, it's really no wonder that some people now question whether or not public universities are still worth the investment. <clears throat> Nearly every state has cut funding from their public universities by about 26% in the last decade, on average. In turn, the cost of tuition and fees nationally has outpaced inflation by three to one since the year 2006. So we really can't be surprised then that in a recent Consumer Reports survey, they found that about half of our college graduates say that their education was not worth the expense. But you know what? Given our history and our hope, VCU will lead in reversing this trend. We can change better and faster than any place I have ever been or ever seen. And that means that we can do something that very few public universities can do. It's true. So a recent Brookings Institution study showed that only 20% of public universities in the nation provide what they call high social mobility for students and at the same time conduct a high volume of research with a social benefit. Remember something, VCU is among that 20%. In other words, what this is really saying is that our educational experience helps students graduate with more opportunities than they had when they got here. And the research and creative activity that we pursue helps society by solving some of its most vexing problems. When you combine these with our safety net healthcare mission, our public university serves a public good in three primary ways. As a social ladder, 
as a social lab, and as a social lever. So let's talk a little bit about that. First, our educational experience at VCU is a social ladder for students. Eduardo Rodriguez is the son of Cuban exiles. He was a hard worker, but as he says, and I'm gonna quote him, I didn't necessarily have the very best pedigree. Well, his education from VCU School of Medicine has helped him to become one of the world's premier transplant surgeons. In fact, he just recently performed one of the most complex tra facial transplantations ever attempted. What he did by doing that is he gave a badly burned firefighter a new chance at life. Eduardo said, and I'm gonna quote him directly, I've always had an, interesting, an interest in finding solutions to difficult problems not prompted by the things I say, by the way. And I certainly received the very best medical education I could have gotten at VCU. Maybe he didn't say very, but it sounds good. <laughs> Gay Nayuk, who is um, a, a, a guy who spent his entire childhood in Kenyan refugee camps. He had very little formal education when he enrolled at VCU. And by the way, he worked uh, the Knights as a security guard right here in Cabell Library. Interesting. Still, Gay is someone who thrived at VCU, graduating with degrees in economics and international relations. And then he earned a Pickering Fellowship to work at the United Nations office in Geneva. Interestingly, by the way, I wanted to throw this in. Then Secretary of State John Kerry told Gay's story in a 2013 speech that he gave. Today, Gay is an economics officer at the State Department. But you know what he still says to this day? He says, but VCU is still my home. Amazingly, VCU has transformed the lives of countless people like Eduardo and like Gay. Every day I meet students who will rise from humble beginnings to reach incredible places in their lives. That's because VCU educates Students, unlike so many of the students that we find at research universities, we are more diverse. And by the way, we are the most diverse in the Commonwealth of Virginia, and it's not even close. Yes, that is something to be very proud of. Many of our students come from very few family resources compared to their peers across the state. VCU educates and we graduate more low-income students than our peers. William and Mary, UVA, and Virginia Tech combined. And our Pell-eligible students, they graduate at identical rates to their VCU classmates who come from much more advantage. Students are drawn to VCU like no place else because we help them reach their dreams like no place else. They come to us to enter meaningful careers, to start businesses, to invent new technology. The list goes on and on and on. They dream and hope about what life can be like for them, for their families, and for the world around them. They care about other people. And they know that VCU is going to give them a chance because VCU will give them the skills that they need to reach those dreams, no matter where they start from. You know, that Brookings Institute, uh, Institution study that I just mentioned earlier, it told us something about how our graduates end up faring economically relative to their peers. So let me share a few things with you that are really interesting from that study. About 17% of VCU students move up two or more income quartiles after they graduate, the highest among any of the universities in the Mid-Atlantic. 2% jumped from the very bottom quartile all the way to the very top, the most that you'll find in the Commonwealth of Virginia. And get this, a student who's born into the, into the bottom one-fifth of incomes has a 27% chance of reaching the top fifth after they graduate from VCU. Is that outstanding or what? And it's because we believe in our charge as a social ladder. It's also because our students work really hard. And I'm very pleased to say that our faculty and staff 
also work hard and are absolutely committed to the success of our students. More and more, our students want to use their prodigious talents to make the world a better place. They see their VCU education as a ladder to do just that. We have an obligation to ensure that they receive the kind of education that will help ensure that they can become that next generation of great leaders, great creators and problem solvers in a world that changes faster and faster every day. We have the obligation to change as our students change. We have an obligation to change with them. Fulfilling our mission as a premier public research university requires us to focus and concentrate resources toward the areas that are most aligned with student success, but I need to say this clearly, student graduation. So, we're going to work together over the next several years to advance the undergraduate experience at VCU. One with the most innovative curriculum in the nation, one that emphasizes deeper engagement, creativity, collaboration, and adaptability. There will be greater emphasis on learning across all disciplines so that students learn not what to think, but rather how to think as 21st century citizens. So I want to be clear about this. This is not something that's going to happen overnight. It will involve all of us. Transforming a curriculum takes time, and it's something we've got to do together as a faculty. It's difficult, but VCU has proven over and over and over that we can be committed to, to doing what's difficult, and we do it well. So favorably, some of our work has already been done, including if I look at the new School of Medicine curriculum and the integration of so much of what we're doing now across all of our health sciences disciplines. The creation of our Da Vinci Center, which continues to be amazing to those who benefit from it, not just our students, but all the companies that benefit from the wonderful solutions. A revised freshman year experience that involves focused inquiry and a makeover of general education. In VCU substantial investments in student innovation and entrepreneurship. And thanks to the work of Provost Tackett and her great team, our students now have clearer pathways to success, to graduation, including more advisors and counselors who can guide them, more seamless transfer agreements, and more resources to speed their time to graduation. This lays a great foundation. And there's still much, to be, much building that we have yet to do. Students at the nation's premier public research university should not be adapting to the world. They should be changing the world. And we're going to help them do that. The educational experience that we offer at VCU will also be defined by diversity and inclusion. We lead in a society that's increasingly ethnically diverse, and it's certainly pluralistic. Historically underrepresented students are not underrepresented at VCU. We are absolutely a microcosm of the world that we're all moving toward, one that creates opportunity for everyone. Our curriculum has to foster inclusive excellence throughout. Students from every background will be able to succeed right here. They will be able to find mentors here and graduate into a world that desperately needs their great thinking, their creativity, and their leadership. That means our educational experience must bring together people who have different ideas, who come from different disciplines so that they can learn from each other and tackle problems that are the thorniest problems, but from new perspectives. It's one of the great things we do in the Da Vinci Center. My commitment is that VCU's educational experience is going to continue to be a social ladder, a public good for the world our students are going to someday lead. Next, our public university is a public good because our research and our creative activity positively impact society. We are a social lab. 
The purpose of our research is to advance society, to help people live longer and better lives. It's research with a social conscience. You all know that the Gates Foundation just awarded VCU $25 million, the second largest grant in our history, to expand medicines for all. That's our initiative, which makes life-saving prescriptions more affordable to people. This amazing work is being done by my colleague, Frank Gupton, in our School of Engineering. And he's joined by colleagues in the schools of pharmacy and medicine as well. We're also tackling the pandemic of opioid addiction, which afflicts more than 2 million Americans now. You know, 77,000 people died last year. Think about that number. It's staggering. Opioid overdose is now the leading cause of accidental death in the United States of America. You notice I didn't tell you that last year. I told you it was the second cause. VCU, by the way, I'm pleased to say, is, no, is number three among the universities for funding research in opioid addiction, covering more than 30 projects across our campuses. These are just a couple of examples of our research as a public good. There are also two examples of our commitment to bringing together people, our colleagues from across disciplines to solve public crises from all angles. This kind of convergent research does a couple of really important things. First, it helps our record-setting research activity grow more and more. Secondly, but more importantly, it builds on our commitment to the public good as we strengthen the areas where our expertise matches with the public need. Consider the enormous impact that we make in the neurosciences, for example, which is represented in nearly every college and school at VCU. VCU now ranks 28th in the nation in terms of NIH funding for neuroscience research. No one else in Virginia is in the top 80, by the way. Nearly 40% of our NIH portfolio is neuroscience research, and it's approaching $35 million. Seven of our highest performing research institutes and centers focus on neuroscience. Our nationally rising academic health system and medical school, combined with our strong relationship with the Veterans Administration, gives us unprecedented opportunity to expand this research in ways that will make a real difference, a real difference for the people who struggle with neurological diseases like Alzheimer's and Parkinson's, brain damage that results from a stroke or a traumatic injury, disorders like autism or the brain disease of addiction. Thus, the research that we're doing at VCU as a public good will profoundly impact the human experience. We're going to take an even greater role in neuroscience research as we go forward. So, I'm envisioning constructing a neuroscience research center in the next few years. A research center that will, that will give us an opportunity to do what we've been thinking about doing for years. And given the breadth of VCU's talents, I want us to bolster the participation of everyone everywhere at VCU, from the arts, humanities, and the social sciences, yes, in the neuroscience initiative. In the coming years, as we expand our commitment to convergent transdisciplinary research, we'll, we're going to invest more in the areas of strength across both of our campuses. Like neuroscience, but also like cancer. And there are many other areas as well. But I want to do this in ways that will continue to advance VCU on the national st stage and to serve the public good. Remember, we've got to have the resources to do what we say we're going to do well. And we need to do whatever we do well. To do this, we've got to be sure that we have the infrastructure and the policies that help make real this great commitment I'm talking about to this brand of research including promotion and tenure guidelines that will reward great collaboration, and engaging students in research to help motivate them and boost their educational experiences. It also means ensuring that our faculty will earn salaries in line with their national peers. This 
is one of my very highest priorities with this General Assembly session this year. This way, we're going to get a chance at ensuring that VCU remains a social lab, a public university that's a public good in a focused way. Finally, our public university is a public good because we are committed to the health and well-being of people anywhere and everywhere. We are a social lever for human health. We are where you want to go when you need good care because we're home to the very best care anywhere. Our aggressive and ambitious facilities plan paired together with our health system's vision by design strategic plan led by Marsha Rapley, our vice president, and her team. This plan is creating world-class service and space to match our world-class talent, and it'll help to meet the needs of patients that we serve. Without question, this will go a long way to helping us fulfill our mission as a public good. We're also the region's leader in health equity. We provide care to all patients, and we work with our community partners to help address the socioeconomic conditions that contribute to health disparities that we have a problem with. And we're extending our public impact even more. Very soon, we're going to open a health and wellness center in Richmond's East End, where many, of, many residents live in poverty and poor health. This center is going to bring together 16 academic units and clinical units from across VCU and VCU Health. And what they will do is work together with civic leaders, community partners, and others coordinated by our Center for Urban Communities. It also reflects our enduring commitment to address the social determinants of health, improving health and wellness overall in advancing scholarship and clinical care. This spring, the Wilder School of Government and Public Affairs will bring new focus to the university's efforts to address the unprecedented and unresolved inequalities of health, health care, housing, and safety in Richmond, a social tragedy that continues to be built on, that continues, unfortunately, having been built on generations of deliberate segregation. As you saw recently in the news, pretty much every night, 54 families in Creighton Court, a neighborhood right near our campuses, were, were forced to live without heat during one of the coldest Januaries that we've ever had on record. That's unacceptable. No matter how great our intentions are or our impact, this university cannot do, undo the effects of historical racism in Richmond. But what we can do and what we will do is use our vast intellectual resources to move society forward together. Our obligation as a public research university and as an anchor institution right here in Richmond is to work with our community partners to dive deep into these issues and to help find solutions that work. The Wilder Schools Initiative will build on the great work already underway across VCU, including by my colleagues like Cheryl Garland and Steve Wolf and many others. And what we're doing is we're working together to make one of the greatest impacts that we can possibly have on Richmond, but also the entire Commonwealth of Virginia. We need to mobilize every resource that we have to make as big a difference as possible for as many people as possible. And what that may mean is it may mean that we have to push some other things aside. This is going to be difficult. But I'm not going to push us any less just because it's hard. We have the chance to do things that no other university has ever been able to do. We have the chance to change lives, and we're going to change lives. That's a pretty phenomenal way that our public university can serve the public good. It's really been my privilege to be together here with all of you today. And it is certainly my privilege to lead a university that is remarkable in the commitments that we all make together. We're a large place, but we do so well together. We are remarkable 
in the ways that we help prepare students and faculty to lead the knowledge revolution and to change the world around us. We're remarkable in the ways that we connect student learning, discovery, and healthcare innovations to build a better society for all people everywhere. So 180 years from now in a new era of history and hope will be a remarkable example of how a public university served the public good. Thank you so much for coming together today and joining me in this commitment. It continues to be a privilege to serve together with all of you, people who are absolutely committed to the success and well-being of all other people, people who are committed to being a public good. Thank you.